I'm sick of Russell Wilson. He's a clown. We've talked about people that have peaked early in their career. Jared Goff. Guys, you know, guys like Jared Goff. I think we can add Russell Wilson to that list. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Penford Sports Podcast. I am your host, Adam Malachuk, as always, joined by my honorable host, your boy Rahilly. Austin Rahilly. Let's get into today's show. As promised, this week we are bringing it to you 1000% due to the kind of sad episode we had last week. It wasn't, it was, it was a weird episode. We were running on little sleep. Um, it just wasn't a great time. What but was it, nine in the morning? Yeah, Something it was like, like 9 a.m. And I don't ever do stuff that early. No. So, well, except for work. But well, right. um, let's talk about week four. Let's give the previous scores real quick. We had the Bengals beating the Dolphins. They finally showed up. And like I said, <laughs> like I said, I don't Joe Burrow it. is back. It was going to take him a few games to warm up. It was going to take him a few games to warm up. He looked more comfortable. He's back. Joey's back, baby, and better than ever. <clears throat> Joe Burrow is back. He beat the Dolphins, so that's exciting. Vikings beat the Saints in London, mate. In London. <laughs> they beat the Saints in London. Andy is probably in his uh, in his, his own element right now with that. Seahawks beat the Lions 48-5. to What a high-scoring game. 48-45. Did I say what did I say? Forty-eight to five. Yeah, that's what I meant. Forty-eight to forty-five. <laughs> Geno Smith, he's looking good, dude. Dude, he's looking. All I'm saying is Geno Smith is playing better than Russell Wilson. He's playing better than he's ever has. And I'm gonna say it: the Seahawks got the better end of that trade. I think, yeah, I do. I, I think a hundred percent. I do too. Yeah, Seahawks beat the Lions again, 48-45. to The Jets beat the Steelers, 24-20. to Giants, my team, beat the Bears, 20-12. to What are you sorry for? We're 3-1. and one. You're a Patriots fan. What's your record? <laughs> What's your record? What are we, 1-3? Yeah, it's tough. We're 3-1. and one. Fun fact for you. I read this um, earlier. Saquon Barkley has 463... Rushing yards through four games this season. You know what he had last year? In all season, only a total of 593 rushing yards all of last season. So season, uh, Saquon is looking great. The Giants also, fun fact, <clears throat> currently have the number one rushing offense in the NFL. Yep, that That's, is true. Uh, yeah, the Giants are, are looking good. Titans beat the Colts 24 to 17. Colts are not looking good. And I must say, yeah. Jonathan Taylor is out with an ankle injury. Yeah, we're gonna talk all about that. <clears throat> we're gonna talk about that. Um Chargers beat the Texans 34 to 24. Falcons beat the Browns 23 to 20. Cowboys beat the Commanders 25 to 10. You know, Cooper Rush is looking really good. Cooper Rush is, um, he's Cooper Rush, man. He's, he's, uh, he's not looking too bad, though. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's good. You know that he's 4-0 and in his career? Yep. That's kind of crazy to me. I, I say they just, even when Dak comes back, if he keeps winning... Just yeah, keep, why don't fix just, something that it's not broken? But they would, but that's but that's what I foresee happening. I see them keep winning until Dak comes back, and then one that's crisp. And once Dak <laughs> comes back, they're gonna they're gonna bench rush and they're gonna start losing games. That's yep. That's my bold prediction. That's my bold prediction. <clears throat> Eagles beat the Jaguars twenty nine to twenty one, and the Eagles are on a roll four and zero. Explain to me how the Eagles are the team that's undefeated this year. 
well, Hurts is looking. That's it. It's just Hurts. Jalen Hurts. Even even adding um, AJ Brown. AJ Brown's good. I think AJ Brown is. I mean, he's 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 pretty good. AJ Brown's good. He's yes, decent. He but Jalen Hurts is Jalen Hurts is good. Jalen Hurts is the team right now. Uh, the Bills beat the Ravens twenty three to twenty in a real close one. Came down to that field goal. Cardinals beat the Panthers twenty six to sixteen. Raiders beat the Broncos. Wow, they won a game. Twenty uh, thirty two to twenty three. They they beat the wow. Broncos. Packers beat the Patriots. <clears throat> you can say the score. Twenty seven to twenty four. Patriots won. <laughs> the Patriots lost. But I, I do want to make a comment, though, about this. So the Packers, in my opinion, have been one of the – they look like one of the most um, inconsistent teams in the NFL because one week they play really well, and then the mm-hmm. next week they don't play well. So they got to figure something out. Um, and it's a lot closer of a game than I thought it was going to be for the for the Packers. But – Props to uh, props to the Patriots, you know. For what losing? Well, but even even keeping it close <laughs> with, I think. Oh, the Bailey third, Zappy dude. Zappy dude, he's your third string, is he? Not? Yeah, that's yeah. Mac Jones is out for the season. Yeah, Potent- potentially. Brian Horry went to the locker room. Yeah. Bailey, they just threw Bailey Zappy in. Yeah, I don't and know. he didn't look too bad. Yeah. Chiefs beat the Buccaneers 41 to 31. Do you really have those in a row? Mahomes put on a show. I will say that. He put on a show. And then the 49ers beat the Rams 24 to 9. The LA Rams, the Super Bowl champs, do not look anything like Super Bowl champs this year. And I cannot stress that enough. They do not look good. They don't. And it's kind of an embarrassment to to the city of Los Angeles. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo played well. Did you play Kittle? I did. Did you get good points? 30, I think. Again? Yeah. Oh, man. Probably the best. But I won this week, so. There you go. Yeah. Probably the most impressive play <clears throat> in that game was not even, you know, like, it wasn't a pass. It it was a tackle, but not a tackle on any of the players. It, in fact, was Bobby Wagner going after this fan that rushed the field. you got to check out this, this Peyton and Eli we clip. Do you have a video of, for it? I, do, I have a All video right. for you. Check out this clip. Peyton and Eli, two, two great quarterbacks, hilarious brothers, hilarious duo. This was their take on it last uh, Monday night. Here you go. Oh, yeah. There he is. Like there he is. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. That's what we're talking Wagner. about. Wagner. Wagner. He said, get off right. the field. Get him down. Now get Had out and tackle. let these guys take over. Get him down and let these guys take over. Take him out. So that was probably the most impressive play. That is your score update from week four. Clay Matthews <clears throat> att- announces his retirement. Great season. Great Great career. Yes, great career. Here's my for question, him. though. Here's my question, though. I thought he already retired. I have not seen Clay Matthews. Yeah, I haven't play since I, I. I don't even remember the last time I saw him play. I don't even know. Like sixteen. Yeah, two thousand sixteen. If I'm even. Correct. I didn't know he didn't retire. Like I didn't know he didn't retire. I assumed he was already retired, but I guess... I haven't seen, like I, you said, I haven't seen much of him either. I guess he had still been working out. Guess but so. who knows? He's retired, finally. <laughs> so long, Clay Matthews. I will say, I still play Madden. I think it's Madden 13. <laughs> and I always play as the Packers. And Clay Matthews is a dog in that season. Oh, yeah. So... That forever. was back when they had AJ Hawk too. Forever in my, forever in my heart, Clay Matthews. Did you hear about uh, Brett Favre's charity scandal? I heard something about it. I didn't get a full. Yeah. So Brett Favre's charity, 
Favre for Hope donated more than $130,000 to the University of Southern Mississippi's Athletic Foundation from 2018 <clears throat> to 2020, according to tax records that were collected by ESPN. So this charity's mission statement says that it provides support for disadvantaged and disabled children as well as breast cancer patients. That's good, though. Yeah, except when they're paying $130,000 to a sports facility. So the legality of these donations is unclear, uh, but Lori Styron, who is the executive director of a uh, watchdog group, Charity Watch, told ESPN that groups like Favre for Hope have an ethical obligation to spend funds the way donors intended it. If the charity told donors it was raising money for breast cancer but then spent the resulting donations on an athletic facility, the people uh, running the organization are not fulfilling their obligations to spend the nonprofit's donations the way its donors intended it. That is what uh, Lori said. Now, during this, this, uh, this same period, uh, Favre was also trying to raise money for a new volleyball stadium at USM. So uh, funds for that stadium are also under scrutiny. Uh, and this is the largest public fraud case in the state of Mississippi's history. Uh, Favre's lawyer, uh, Bud Holmes. What a name for a lawyer. Real, real Mississippi. Bud, Bud Holmes. Holmes. The name's Bud Holmes, representing <laughs> attorney at law. Well, this is what he said. He said, uh, in regards to Favre, he has been very generous to Southern Miss since he played ball there. Those particular things, I don't know. But I know he has always given back something most athletes don't do. That's kind of like a cover-up. He's giving back. Trust me. Trust me there, Johnny. <laughs> He's giving back. But the funds for Southern Miss is just something that he loves because that's where he played ball. <clears throat> that's what, how I picture Bud Holmes in my head. You might be right. Apparently, Favre has actually paid all this money back. So we'll see what happens, but I don't know. I'm, I'm hearing some people say that he's going to go to jail and start a, uh, a football team like in the longest yard. <laughs> in other news, Eli Manning, my guy. Trash. <clears throat> Excuse me? What's the, Jed, hey, Jed, hey. Chad Powers? Yeah, Chad Powers. He goes, <laughs> did you see the Chad Powers? No. So Eli Manning dressed up as this fake person and shrieded out. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. I saw Ch- that. It's Chad Powers. So Eli Manning, or, or Chad Powers, as he has been recently known, uh, actually had something to say about Russell Wilson during last week's episode of the Manning cast. Um, basically, what he said about the Broncos' win over the 49ers was this. They should have paid the punter... Two hundred thirty-five million instead of Russell. And is he wrong? No. <laughs> Wilson didn't like that comment. In fact, he replied in a press conference when someone joked uh, about Chad Powers that he was on three and zero against Chad Powers. That's what he said. I'm sick of Russell Wilson. He's a clown. We've talked about people that have peaked early in their career. Jared Goff. Guys, you know, guys like Jared Goff. I think we can add Russell Wilson to that list. He had his his few Super Bowl runs. And now what? The own team of his that apparently we're going to love him and respect him for all he did for the great organization <laughs> that is the Seahawks <laughs> booed him at his first game back. And it wasn't just a boo. It was a roar. Like I said, week it, was one, it was a roar, electrifying of booze. Electri- uh, it, it was electric. You're done, Russell Wilson. It's over. Geno Smith, we talked about him. You should just make like he's Clay good. Matthews and retire. Yeah, just retire, okay? And then have you seen his stupid his stupid Subway commercial? Oh, this is my sandwich. It's the dangerous sub. <laughs> have you done anything dangerous? Neither of you. <laughs> you walked into two Super Bowls. And you lost both of them. No, they won one. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure they won one Super Bowl. Did they? 
Yeah. Could be wrong. We'll have your brother actually fact check us later. Yes, yes. Because he's going to fact check on that. But Russell Wilson, you trash. Go back to your your singer, songwriter wife. Stop wearing your mint tuxedos. <laughs> Ugh. Do you know the Broncos started with a 3-0 and season under Teddy Bridgewater last year? Uh, they started with a 3-0. and What are they at now? 1-3? One in, one in Can't say enough. I'm over it. <laughs> it's all good, though, Austin, though, because I'm not the only one that's heated. Coach Belichick, he's been heated the last couple of uh, last couple of days, and it all started with with a press conference uh, when a reporter asked him a simple question about Mac Jones. Let me let me play the video of his response here for you. I think you're gonna like this. My ankle sprain. Day by day. What do I look like? A doctor, an orthopedic surgeon? Like I don't know. Talking to the medical experts. What are the medical experts on staff said to you? Day by day. Fish well, evaluate day. him, Dave. I mean, what difference does it make to me? What do you, do you think I'm going to read the MRI? That's not my job. So. Yeah, but it's theirs, and they, they talk to you about it, right? Yeah, it's day by day. It's getting better day by day. <laughs> what do I look like? <laughs> a medical expert? <laughs> you look like a doctor? <laughs> He's just so fed up. Day. He's just so fed up at this point. You know, that's not even the thing I wanted to rant about, but there's... Go ahead. Go his on. headset. His headset. Gone. His, his headset. Gone. That's it. Snapped it in half. He, gr- well, he gronk spiked his, his headset. headset. For what? I think it was like a call. It was a call, but they had got, they had got the, the play right. It doesn't matter to Belichick. He's an angry man. Ever since Brady left, ever since Gronk left, he's an angry and man. And his son is the most annoyingest, the video geekest <laughs> person I have he ever the, seen. He has the worst <laughs> mullet. It's like a Caesar cut in the front. It's a it's a and a rat tail in the back. It's a wish and this that is him, this is him on the sideline. <laughs> Sticking his tongue out. Cut that out, Steve. Cut it out. Go live under your dad's money. I don't care. It's a Wish mullet. He got it from Wish. Yeah. It's not great. It's not great. Other news. It's a scandal that I am, uh, I too am part of. You actually brought this to my attention earlier today. Did I? Tom Brady. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that, Austin, because it's a scandal now that I'm involved in due to my um, relationship with Giselle. It's not public. <laughs> well, now information. it's fair game. It's not public information yet. Well, when they do get divorced because they had filed, Tom Brady and Giselle had filed yeah. for. Let me let me read this here. Page, a, page six. Oh, you did find it. I did find the article. Uh, let me just pull it up real quick. Divorce lawyers, both of them. So. It's not official yet. Tom Brady, Giselle, hire divorce lawyers amid marital woes. This is page six. This is legit. Um, Basically, this argument they've had about him going back has been such a a big... uh, I hate her. I must say. That's my future wife. I, I hate your future wife. He doesn't. She doesn't want to. Let's take it easy. Let's take it easy. No. Let's take it no, easy. no. 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 Hold Let's take me it back, easy. bro. Let's take it easy. Because she doesn't want him to live his passion at all she anymore. She also apparently doesn't want him to make bands. Well, clearly not. They have a multi-million-dollar family. Yeah, and <laughs> they're they're going to split it. Joint custody, joint funds. Probably going to divorce in the state of Florida. Well, since he is divorced, he might be able to play a few more years. Could you imagine after he's divorced, <laughs> he just plays for another like five, six? Right? He's just like, screw it. I got he's a play until he's fifty, dude. So that is uh, that's our, our drama report. Let's talk a little bit about injuries. Tua was carted off the field on Thursday night. That was insane. With a head and neck injury, that shit. his coach Mike McDaniel <clears throat> announced earlier this week that he's not going to be playing against the Jets because he is still in concussion protocol. 
So I'm not sure what the total severity of that situation is, but um, thoughts and prayers with Tua. Hopefully he can figure that all out. Oh, yeah. J.J. Watt had some issues with his heart last week and actually went into AFib last Wednesday and had to have his heart shocked back into rhythm. He announced this all on Twitter. And wow! In the in the post game conference this past week, he I don't think I've ever heard. He talked about it. He was having a heart issue, and um, but the fact that he still played. The Watt brothers are a different animal. Them like, and the Boses. Yeah, it's just it's, it's crazy. So JJ Watt had a scary situation happen to him. Um, it looks like it's all good. We'll see as the following weeks go out. A little sad one for me. Sterling Shepard out for the season with a torn ACL. Javante Williams. May have suffered a torn ACL in Sunday's game against the Raiders. And Melvin Gordon will be the starter. And the Broncos have signed Latavius Murray from the Saints practice lineup. Yeah, Javante Williams was the only hope. For Russell Wilson. And now Russell Wilson has no hope. So it's time for him to retire. You're done, Russell Wilson. I think that's the uh, sign there. Get out. See you later. See you later. <clears throat> Daniel Jones left the game on Sunday with an ankle injury. And then Tyrod Taylor, the backup, left in the fourth quarter with a concussion. Later on that night, Jones said he was good. However, he will not be starting on Sunday. No. So. I must add that Tyrod Taylor in his prime, he was a different breed. Yeah. But I mean, not, not anymore. Well, right. Well, he's a different breed. He's a slow breed now. Right. Um. <laughs> so we'll see what the Giants do. Apparently, they're, they're talking to some QBs, not trying to put anyone on contract. Just, just get him for like one game. So we'll see. Cordero Patterson placed on the uh, injury reserve list with a knee injury. DK that's, Metcalf. That's big for the Falcons. Oh, yeah. It's that's, huge. That's a big uh, injury there. It's huge. Should have hurt him. It's huge. <clears throat> DK Metcalf. He was carted off the field <laughs> in Sunday night's game, but it wasn't actually for uh, it wasn't for an injury. It was for a bathroom break. Um, I think he was gonna poop his pants yeah the, the big word was was clinching yeah he was clinching and we all and not the playoffs pants. he wasn't clinching the playoffs he was clinching his cheeks so yes he didn't poop his pants <clears throat> well that is your injury report for this week and on to the fit check let's get into fit check baby so <clears throat> we all know joe burrow beat the uh the the dolphins on thursday night but we should have known that he came to the stadium That's sick. willing, That's ready, and expecting to win with this floral suit. That's sick. I do like that. 10 out of 10. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. In other news, <clears throat> Von Miller wrapped himself up in some tin foil, said throw me a rotisserie <laughs> chicken oven and let me slow roast, baby. He likes the, uh, it looks like the, uh, what's, what's that from Wizard of the Oz? W- oh, the Wizard Tin of, Man. <laughs> yeah, the Tin Man from Wizard if of Oz. If I only had a heart. <laughs> he gets a 2 out of 10 for that. Yeah, no. I might even rank him on that. And then, uh, when in Britain, do what the British do. And that's exactly what Cam Jordan did. I do like that vest and tie. That's I, what I'm saying. He's I got do the like British. That. He's got the nice suit with the, the, the lining of this jacket. He's got the British flag and then the vest that's and tie. That's different. As well. It like looks that. good. It looks good. <clears throat> Derek Henry. Now, I think he was about to get on stage and sing with the Beatles. He had a very, like, hippie vibe going for him. I kind of think it's cool, though. I think he's on the cast of the I Love Lucy reruns. But <laughs> I kind of think it's cool, though. Like, I kind of like it. Really? I think it's bold. And I like bold. I don't know, man. I, I kind of dig it. It takes, a, it takes a, a bold guy to wear that, a confident guy. And if we know anything <clears throat> about Derrick Henry, it's that he's confident. Oh, yeah. Andre Sisko. He had the Old Town Road fit. Lil Nas. He looks like Lil Nas X. <laughs> it was not good. It was like, I'm trying to be a cowboy, but I'm not. So 
you know, after that terrible display of what a cowboy should be, uh, we were shown what a true cowboy yes. should be by our very own. My, must say, this is my brother's favorite. This is your brother's favorite? Yes. Malcolm Rodriguez. Malcolm Rodriguez. He showed us how it's done <clears throat> to be a cowboy once again. Should have been a cowboy. Should have learned to rope and ride. So I guess he got the job for with Yellowstone. He must he's, have. he's back at it again. He's back at it again. So. Tell me this, though. Why did Travis Kelsey uh, <laughs> walk into the stadium looking like everyone's creepy uncle in Las Vegas? He looks was, like, uh, what's his name? Go ahead, I'll think of it. <clears throat> yeah, just let me know what you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might take a little time. Yeah. Not going along. Up Ma- there. Uh, not, not like going Miller on up there. there. Mac Miller. Mac Miller. <laughs> All right, P. Christian McCaffrey wore a trash bag. I can only assume it symbolized <laughs> how trash he was at staying healthy. Um, yeah. Adam Thielen had some uh, sick cleats for the uh, <laughs> London game. He had Jason Sudeikis on them as Ted Lasso. Big fan of the show. Chris Olave also had Olave. some plus. Oh, I, I'm terrible at these names, bro. Chris Olave. Good thing you're here to correct me. Those are good. I like those. Yeah, he had custom cleats in London to honor his Cuban heritage. They were pretty clean as those well. Are nice. And then Sunday was a legacy game for the New York Giants. And let me just say. I love those. Their I do throwback love those. uniforms I do. were so clean. <clears throat> The whole stadium looked like it was it was the nineties. They had the the old style end zones. It oh was, yeah, it was sweet. It was sweet. I was a big fan of those. Uh, but the Washington Commanders also had uh, had a alternate uniform. But I love how they changed the uh, the whole the name, the uniforms. Yeah, but these, these look uni- ten times better. But they just look like the Steelers uniforms. No, they don't. They kind of do. The they black don't. and yellow. It's black, yellow, and red. There's a very thin the line. The red around the lettering. Very lettering. thin line of red, but at a glance, you're going to tell me that doesn't look like it's a Steeler. Like, if I just glance at that real quick, I'm like, oh, it's Steelers. Well, yeah. Regardless, they're cool. They're cool. Right. They're cool. And I do want to add that you didn't put in here the Cincinnati Bengals. Black and white. Albino. Oh, yeah, yeah. Albino. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the snow tiger. Those. Were insane. They were pretty. They were pretty cool. They were pretty cool. <clears throat> this episode is brought to you by Penford Media. Penford Media is a multi-creator platform that is designed to help creators grow. Now, the Penford Sports Podcast is a creator of Penford Media. How good has Penford Media been to you? You know, I didn't know much about it. Yeah. Until, say, a few months ago. Yeah. And it's, I love it. Yeah, Penford it's, Media it's, is great. Here's the thing about Penford Media. You know, most people when they when they start a podcast, they have they don't or not a podcast or anything, a podcast, right. a YouTube channel, they don't know where to start, right? Right. Penford Media, the good thing about Penford Media is they're here to help you with that. Right. They have a base of 60 over 65,000 subscribers, um, which gives you a solid uh, base of subscribers to build your content around. So, if you make good content, people are going to eat it up, which means that you can get viewers of your own. So, if you think you have what it takes, go to their website and join today to sign up to be one of the creators. Someone will reach out to you, uh, they'll schedule a meeting with you, and hopefully you have what it takes to join the Penford Media team. Now, Penford Media is a proud sponsor of the Penford Sports Podcast. That is our fit check. Let's get into the uh, the top fl- uh, the top five plays and the player of the week. Uh, I picked all of this week's top five. Austin will pick next week's top five. But <clears throat> let's just get after it. Let's get into it. Coming in at number five, Patty Mahomes points to his left. Oh, sneak play, touchdown, Chiefs. Noah Gray. Noah Gray. <clears throat> what a what guy. A, what a name. Now, Patrick Mahomes must have taken a lot of tips from his acting career with State Farm to really pull this one off. <laughs> because, boy, did he get the Buccaneers defense looking the other way. That's number five. Coming in at number four, <clears throat> Daniel Jones, my man. He looks around. Nobody to pass it to. He says, help. Oh, I'm going to run it in for myself. Little sidestep. Touchdown, Giants. Look at Danny Legs there. Danny 
Legs. He used to be Danny Dimes. <laughs> yeah. He retired that name for Danny Legs. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Coming in at number three. My guy. Here we go. They snap the ball to Jared Goff. Perfect coverage from the rookie. Tariq Woolen picks it off. Runs it down the line. A little bit of juke action. Touchdown, Seattle. That's my guy, pick dude. Six. That's my guy. The rookie, Tariq Woolen. Coming in at number two, my man. The, the University of Michigan alum himself. Donovan People Jones. They pass it deep. Donovan lays out. Touchdown Browns. That was beautiful. Michigan, man. They they breed good players. Say what you want. Say what you want about Alabama. Say what you want about Georgia. Say what you want about Ohio State. Ohio State quarterbacks are garbage. Trash. Let's just let's just, let's just get that out. The only good Ohio State quarterback that's decent. Justin Fields and he's really not even he's really not even that I'm done with it all I mean Best look at Brady college football look at Brady Michigan, Michigan. Donovan People Jones Michigan Aiden Hutchinson Michigan Randy Moss you know what they all? Michigan. Marshall Michigan Marshall Michigan Marshall Michigan Marshall Michigan Marshall yeah, but Marshall's really not that good. They were. They were not they're inconsistent. Not. No, they're not. We are Marshall. <laughs> Great film. Great film. That, is, that was a good movie. Great movie. I love football movies. <clears throat> Maybe next week we'll rate our rate the, the f- best football movies. I'd like that. Yeah. All right, coming in at number one. In true Halloween fashion in October, Lamar Jackson. They snap in the ball. Buffalo's defense comes on. Oh, he gets sacked. Surprise. No, he doesn't because he's a wizard. Deep pass. Out of the hands. Bobbled by Mark Andrews and then picked up by Devin DuVernay. Grabs it out of the air for the first down. He keeps showing up every week. Every du- DuVernay? Week. He's showing up. DuVernay. DuVernay. Every single week. So those are our top five plays of the week. <clears throat> Let's talk about our players of the week. My player of the week, Geno Smith. 91.3 QB rating, 76.7 completion percentage, 320 pass yards, two touchdowns. Fun fact, he also has a 77.3 completion percentage this season. And that's the highest yeah, rate not too bad at all. through the first four games in NFL history. <clears throat> so my player of the week, Geno Smith. I'm going to say it again because I really want people to understand what I'm saying here. Seattle got the better end of that trade than the Broncos did. Russell Wilson is trash. I mean, look Geno at Noah Smith, Fant. The tight end for Seattle that was over at Denver. Yeah. He's putting on a show. Yeah. I mean, Russell Wilson, <clears throat> trash. Geno Smith is the new wave, baby. Uh huh, uh huh. So that's my player of the week. <clears throat> Who's your player of the week, Austin? Mister Divorced himself, Tom Brady. <clears throat> I don't. I don't think that's right. The newly single Tom Brady. Yeah. These are these are the seventy four. These I are think the, it was 90-something. This No, this is from yesterday's oh, game okay. stats. Okay, okay. Yesterday's game stats. 74 QB rating, 75 completion percentage, 385 passing yards, and three tutties. <clears throat> what a guy. What a guy. Tom Brady. Michigan. All right, so those are our players of the week. Uh, we got two callers on today. We have, uh, first we're going to go to our faithful caller, Mr. Zach Snyder. Zach, are you there? What's up, boys? Happy Tuesday. How we doing? We are doing phenomenal. Every day we, every day we podcast, we're doing amazing. Yeah. Zach, what would you like to say? It's been over a week since we had you on, and you, and you delivered those hurtful words to Andy. Um, what would you like to say about that game 
Well, 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 boys. It's that time of year. The Detroit Lions are right on schedule, sitting at one in three. Certainly a familiar time of year, you know, here in Detroit. But, boys, let me tell you, the best week every year in Detroit is bye week, when they finally give us a breath, a chance to watch a good football team at 1 o'clock, and not have to watch a stressful four quarters of football being played and the bag being fumbled in the fourth quarter every game. I tell you what, guys, my entire life, Detroit has been the most pitiful team in the league right here in my home state. Not a good look, gentlemen. Something's got to give. Not a good look at all. Not a good look at all. So the most pitiful <clears throat> sports team in your state, is that what you said? Did I hear that correctly? Obviously, we have Eastern Michigan and whatnot, but, you know, and when it comes Michigan to professional state. sports, of course, there's the Pistons, you know, um, but I mean, just, I mean, just consistently the absolute worst <clears throat> in their league and conference, man. It's absolutely pitiful. They can't seem to get a coach in there or yeah. GM that seems to care about the, the program and turn it around. Now, the one thing I will say, though, about the, the Lions' current head coaches. He does seem to light a bit of a fire underneath that Michigan team. Um, what do you, I mean, obviously you had something to say. I mean, what do you think of, uh, what, what, what do you think of, of Michigan's coach? I mean, I mean, I feel like this is the first year that uh, Detroit has put on somewhat of a display of a decent team first year in a long time. Um, but they still can't seem to get get the wins they're looking for. What do you well, think? Listen, Adam, every every five to ten years or so, there's a lot of hype around the Lions team. There was a few years back, I believe it was probably probably ten years now, when they had Calvin Johnson, had Reggie Bush, Matthew Stafford. They had a good lineup: Nate Burleson, Titus Young. They had some good players, but they just can never get it done, man. No matter how many good draft picks they get from being zero and sixteen. They can just – they just never get it done. You know, they, they're they that team that has that stigma about them that they just can't win. And I think everyone in Michigan has accepted that by now. I mean, we're not we're not used to them winning, and so we just – we learn to live with it, and we certainly learn to laugh at it. Yeah. I mean, that's all that's all you can do. Well, Zach, so as true. always, we appreciate you coming on, and uh, we'll, we'll check back in uh, in with you next week, okay? Thanks again for having me, boys. I just want to say, if you guys do the football movies, The Blind Side is at the top of my list. Oh, 100%. That's my number one. Uh, yeah, check out The Blind Side. Definitely top three. Definitely it's, top. All right. Well, safe. thanks for coming on, Zach. I'll take it easy, boys. Bye. All right. Up next, you want to introduce our next guest? My brother, uh, Chris Hilchey. Now, it's been said that I probably should have had him as my co-host because he knows a lot more about football than you. That was hurtful. Yeah. Well, regardless, welcome to the show, Chris. You're a Patriots <laughs> fan. I gotta ask. Uh, I gotta ask, Thanks, guys. What do you think of uh, Coach Belichick's anger outrages these days? It's nothing new. It's you know, true. you can always expect a good anger, you know, outrage from Bill Belichick. That's 100 percent true. <laughs> All right, walk us through everything you've seen so far this season with the Patriots. What what they what you think they need to improve? What you like? What you dislike? Um, give us a little run through of, of how you think the team is. I mean, obviously they haven't been off to a great start. Do you think they can turn it around? So, unfortunately, this year is not a turnaround year for the Patriots. They're they're going through their. Um, they're young years now. They're they're back. They're they're back to being young again. You know, so it's gonna take a couple drafts for them. You know, to get back to where we used to be. If not, maybe maybe it'll never happen again. But um, I don't think we're gonna get to that point again. Um, but what I do like from the New England Patriots this year is everyone seems to kind of be like in the leadership mode. Right. You know, everybody. It's, it's not just that one player. Right. You know, it's not just Mac Jones. It's not just Damian Harris. It's everybody coming together, you know, trying to trying to figure out game time situations and uh, just trying to work together as a team and get the ball down the field. Right. So, and it was interesting when Bailey Zappi came in 
and he did a good job. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very surprised. Yeah, I was. I was yeah, impressed. Absolutely. I mean, obviously they lost the game, but it was it was good to see a third string that could kind of compete at that level. Right. It was it was but with, with Bill Belichick as the as the head coach and him being him, you know, he pulls a lot of stuff out of his arse there and makes makes it happen. Yeah. He no definitely. He definitely he definitely does. Definitely. So obviously, you know, you give us your thoughts on the on the Patriots. What would you say? What are teams to look out for this year? Who do you think is going to really shock us the most? So you really want to look out for the the Philadelphia Eagles. Obviously, they're four and zero right now. Right. You know who who would have ever saw that coming? Yeah. No, right. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, because and I'm saying that because AJ Brown last season, you know, he's very injury prone last year. You think maybe he maybe that would roll over to this year too, but it's not. He's actually looking really healthy. He's playing great. Right. You know, he's the, he's the clear wide receiver number one, you know, on that depth chart. So, <laughs> so um, Jalen Hurts is throwing the ball and running the ball. Amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, no, they're another a one is, tough, team to be, tough team to beat this year. Another yeah. one is definitely the Lions. I feel like, I feel like they're going to show up. Yeah. Um, they're definitely going to be over 500 this year. I, that, that's, that's, that's me. But. I do. I do have the lines showing up. We'll see. What are your thoughts on um, Chris? What are your thoughts on the on the Jags? Um, you know, it, it's. I don't know. Once how again, f- once again, you're dealing with a very young team. Yeah. But very, very, very talented young team. Yeah. So give it, give it, give it. You know, I'd say three to four more years with this Jags team. Yeah. They're they're gonna be heading to playoffs. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, yep, I'm, absolutely. I'm, absolutely. I'm kind of torn on the Jags. You know, that you see them play a really good game, and then it's kind of they don't play so well. It's honestly, I was, uh, you know, we were saying earlier, it's the same way with the Packers this season. You know, it's just mm. been very odd. Some of the teams that they're playing very close games with, you would not expect, and then some of the teams that they're losing to makes almost completely no sense. But then they're beating people like the Buccaneers. Right. Um, it's it's very <clears throat> odd this season. Uh, any other any other thoughts on on teams? Uh, what would you say aside from aside from the Eagles? Who do you think is going to surprise the NFL the most this year? Oh, um, yeah, let's see. I I think the Bengals are going to make a late comeback again. Yeah, I hope yeah. so. Yeah, I I I think I think a little bit. You know, towards midseason, I think the Bengals are going to turn it around. You know, because they're dealing with a new line. Yeah. You know, um, with um, Alex Kappa coming over from the Bucks. Right. And dealing with Lael Collins too coming over from the Cowboys. So um, they're they're just trying to work together. You know. Yeah. Trying to get to feel one another. They they so. definitely need to get Eli Apple out of there though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I don't, I'm not I'm not a huge Eli Apple fan so. Yeah, you know, I, I said it at the beginning of the show, uh, and I'm going to say it again. Joe Burrow's back. It took him a couple of games right. to kind of warm up. People were saying Joe Burrow was a fluke. He had a fluke season. He wasn't good. I disagree. We saw how he played in uh, when he played for LSU. He beat Alabama, yeah. which yeah. not any quarterback could do. You know, you haven't seen anything close really to that. Right. So – I think Burrow's back. I think that he's really starting to heat up. He's starting to get comfortable again. And I agree 100% with you. I think they are going to make a late run. I think it's going to take them a little yeah. bit of time to get back to the level they were at. Not but to I, mention T. Higgins not. coming back. Right. Yeah, once, yeah, they, once they start getting on that track, they're not going to stop. That's what happened last Every, year. Everybody was worried about the loss of C.J. Ozoma. You know, we're like, what's going to happen? Like, we're losing, yeah. you know, a, a, key, a key tight end of us. And then, and then they go out and get Hayden Hurst. Yeah. He's showing out. He's yeah. showing out. Yeah, he, know, is, so. he really has. Good yeah. for them. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited yeah. to see how they go. Um, well, Chris, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on. Um, <clears throat> I believe you're going to be on next week because you and your brother play each other in fantasy. Yeah. Um, yep. so, so that'll be interesting. We'll, we'll see a little bit of, uh, we'll call it brotherly love. Yeah, we'll call it that. Um, <laughs> yeah. But we appreciate you coming on tonight. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on. Yeah, no problem, guys. Thanks for having me. Yep. Yeah. See you later. See you. All right. See you. All right. So, 
last but not least, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about our current standings in the NFL, and then we'll give our predictions. Now, I just want to bring up one thing that really irritated me when I was scrolling through uh, Instagram today. The power rankings came out. Okay, the power rankings for weeks five, and I'm I'm very upset. I know what you're going to say. Look at look at the power rankings. I know what you're going to say. Tell me what I'm going to say, Austin. Eagles. Why are the Eagles ranked third? And Kansas City and Buffalo are ranked first and second. Explain this to me. This should be Eagles. Explain this to me. Bills, Chiefs. The Packers. Eagles are 4-0. and Until right. the Eagles lose, they are the number one ranked team in the NFL. I don't care what you say. That is how it works. That is how it works. Number one, Kansas City Chiefs. Number one ranked team is not a team that loses to Matt Ryan in the Colts. <laughs> I agree 100%. Stop playing with the ratings. You literally are only doing this because you want... You have a bunch of bandwagon KC fans who became fans of of KC as soon as Patrick Mahomes joined KC. That's the only reason they're fans. Because they made a good run. Who was Kansas City before that? Alex Smith and nobody. Nobody. Alex Smith, and we know what a bust that was. Yep. First round pick. Also selling cars. <laughs> all of the all of the first round picks that are failures are all at a used car lot somewhere in Texas. <laughs> selling Buicks, Grandma Buicks, not like a new Buick. They're right. selling like the Grandma Buicks. They ride around our town, selling meth to the little kids. <laughs> Pop the trunk. I got some guns for you. <laughs> I'm so sick of ESPN. No, but I'm sick of ESPN. I'm sick of Sports Center. I'm sick of all of them giving these power rankings just to people that because they like a team. Bandwagon fans, bro. My coworker, we were talking about this the other day. He's a Kansas City fan now all of a sudden. Guess when he became a Kansas City fan? And he admitted this to me. When they won a Super Bowl? No. When Tom Brady left. The same year that Patrick Mahomes was playing well, right? Who's a Patriots fan? He was a fake Patriots fan. Now he's a Kansas City fan. Didn't they beat the the Chiefs to the, the Patriots? Bears? No, the uh, the Bucks. Bucks. Yeah, but he wasn't a Bucks fan. He switched to, the, to he switched he switched. He didn't even follow Brady. He's just yeah. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna leave a team, I mean, follow your QB. Right. That's I what can, I do. I can't respect it, but I can understand it. Right. But now he's a Chiefs fan. We're the best team in football. We're going to win. Yeah, okay, Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> so those are the power rankings, and I was very upset about that. Very upset about that. <clears throat> but let's get into the current standings. And the AFC in first place, the tied AFC East, first. tied for first place. we got the, the Dolphins and the Bills. In second place with a 2-2 two and two record, we have the Jets. And then in last place with a one and three record, the Patriots. The AFC West, unfortunately in first place. You okay today? No, I'm not. <laughs> unfortunately in first place, we have the Kansas City Chiefs with a three and one record. Yes, unfortunately. Tied for second, we have the Chargers and Broncos, both two and two. And then the Raiders in last place, one and three. I thought Getting, I thought they lost again. Who? The Raiders. I thought no, they were they, I thought they were over four. They they no, they beat the Broncos. Right. AFC North. Three-way f- tie. Yeah, three-way tie in first place between the Browns, Ravens, and Bengals, all two and two. AFC South. Two-way tie between the Jaguars and the Titans for first place. Second place goes to the Colts, one and two. And then third place. I I, I am wrong. Well, the Colts are one, two, and one. And then in third place, the Texans are oh, three and one. I thought the Texans were going to be big this year. Yeah, you you actually had some bold predictions for the Texans. At, at, I did at our first during our first episode. You said watch the Texans, and we are watching them. Lose. We're just watching them lose. Yeah, <laughs> we're just watching them lose. Just watching them lose. <clears throat> the NFC East in first place. Your number one ranked team in the NFL. No, your number third team. Shut up. Your number one ranked <laughs> team in the NFL. Drum roll, please. The Philadelphia Eagles. 
tied for second place, we have the Cowboys and the Giants <laughs> with three and one. And then in last place, the Commanders one and three. NFC West. Wow. It's all tied two and two for the 49ers, Rams, Cardinals, and Seahawks. The NFC North tied for first place. The Vikings and the Packers, three and one. Third place, the uh, second place, I should say, the Bears, two and two. And in last place, the Lions, one and three. This one's interesting. The NFC South? The Falcons, tied with the Bucks For first place, two and two. And then last place is also a tie. One and three for the Saints and Panthers. Yeah, the Falcons aren't great. No. Well, I mean, I guess the Bucks ain't either. Yeah, the Bucks have been this year. So those are our uh, our power rankings. Or not our power, well, not our power rankings, our standings. Now we're on for our next show. week's predictions. The power rankings that ESPN put out are fake. I'd say. I have never in my life been a Philadelphia fan. Oh, no. But I'm going to say on record, they are the number one ranked team in all of football right now. Yep. But enough of that. Let's get into predictions. Starting with Thursday night, who you got winning, Colts or Broncos? I got Broncos. As do I. Giants and Packers, I have Giants. Really? Yep. Let's see. That's a tough one. Here's why I'm going to say Giants. One simple statement. Giants have been really consistent this year. The Packers have not. Yeah. So I have the Giants winning. So now this one, Lions and Patriots. I want to say Patriots. I'm of course I want to. I want to, and I know Zach's listening. Go ahead, li- just, just say it. I know Zach's listening. I know Zach's listening, and... He is listening. I'm, I will be... I don't think Zach ever left the, uh, the... Zach, are you still here? Are you still on the Zoom? I own this Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, do you think the Lions are going to win it? Listen, guys, it's a slippery slope for Detroit. I think they're going down from here. Down from here. Lost this week. Lost. You think they're going to lose to the Patriots? Correct. All right. Wow, that's very bold well, of you Austin, to say. Your because prediction? I was, I'm a Patriots fan, and I think the Lions are going to win. All right. Chargers and Browns. <clears throat> I'm going to go Chargers. Oh, no, I'm going to go Browns. What are the Browns, Browns standing? Yeah, what are they? I think two and two. You know what? I think the Browns are going to come out. I think they're going to come out. Texans and Jaguars. Jaguars. Oh, yeah. Uh, Buccaneers, Falcons, Bucks. Yeah. Bills and Steelers. Bills. Skip right over this one. <laughs> <laughs> Dolphins and Jets. Dolphins. Got the Jets. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Dolphin. Well, two is not playing though. Who's backup? Taylor or Bridgewater? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go to just my Miami still. Yeah. Vikings and Bears. Who's winning it? Yeah, uh, Vikings. Okay. Uh, Titans, Commanders. I think Commanders are gonna come out and yeah show up. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, Seahawks, Saints. I'm going Saints. I don't know, man. They're not looking too good. With a with a big Oh no no no. I don't know why I said Saints. I'm I know I'm going Seahawks. I know I'm going Seahawks. Yeah. Because Geno Smith. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going Seahawks. 49ers, Panthers, 49ers, dude. Jimmy G. Yeah. Eagles, Cardinals. I'm going Eagles. Eagles. Rams, Cowboys. I'm going Cowboys, actually. No way. The Rams look pathetic this year. They do, but you really think go- Cooper Rush is. I'm going is gonna... Cowboys. I'm going Cowboys. You think so? He's four and oh. In his career. I'm going Rams. Bengals, Ravens. That's that's a big that's a good one. It might be stupid, but I'm going Joe Burrow. I'm going Bengals. I'm going LJ eight. And then last but not least, Raiders, Chiefs. Raiders. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I'm gonna have to go with the Chiefs. Because we're the best team in no, all of football. Know. I was kidding. I'm going so. definitely going to the Chiefs. All right. Well, those are our predictions for next week. We went long tonight. We definitely did. But we, had, we, had, we did have to make up for the. We owed you. Yep. We owed you. We do. So we hope you enjoyed this longer episode. Do you have anything else to add? No. All right. Except for ESPN needs to fix their power rankings. That's yeah. that's about it. Well, as always, guys, uh, thank you for watching the Penford Sports Podcast. 
You can follow us on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's Penford Media. Follow us on Instagram, Penford Sports. Uh, it's Facebook as well. Follow and like on Facebook. Yep. And as always, thanks for watching the show. We hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a great rest of your day.